Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we are reviewing how to solve a quadratic equation and we're going to use these methods here. We're going to graph, we're going to solve by factoring, we're going to complete the square, and we're also going to use the quadratic formula, which is the box that I'm in right now. So follow along with me. I'm going to give you a function. I'm going to show you how we go through all these steps. No matter what the function is, you can still do all of these strategies, just the numbers change, but the process doesn't. So follow along with me, and we're going to get this whole chart filled right in. All right, so the function we're going to take a look at is f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. So nice basic function. You've probably graphed this function before, something similar to it. You've also probably factored this before and done completing the square and the quadratic formula. That's a pretty common quadratic that we're going to be taking a look at. So the first thing I'd want to do if I wanted to do the graphing method is to first find the axis of symmetry. And remember, the axis of symmetry is a tiny little formula. It's just x equals negative b over 2a. So if I look at this function, I should be able to see that my a value is 1, my b value is 4, and my c value is 3. So as long as I know that my a is 1, my b is 4, and my c is 3, I plug that into the formula, I only need b and a, and I get my result. So it would be x equals negative 4 divided by 2 times a, which is 1. This then becomes negative 4 over 2, and negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So my x is negative 2. Now, after I find my axis of symmetry, my x value for negative 2, we've learned that we then substitute that negative 2 in back into this function to solve for y. And that x and y value are then going to be the h and k, which is the vertex of the function. So if I go ahead and I take this function now, f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, I go ahead and I substitute a negative 2 in for everywhere I see x. So it would look like this. f of negative 2 equals negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 3. And then we evaluate. So negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So this then becomes f of negative 2 equals 4 minus 8 plus 3. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So it ends up being that my vertex is negative 2, negative 1. It's this x value and this y value that we created. And again, that's my hk. So now I can go ahead and I can take this vertex. I can plug it into vertex form. Vertex form of a function would be a... My a value was 1, h, well, x minus h. And remember, if it's x minus h and my h value is negative, x minus a negative 2 would really make it x plus 2. And then plus k, my k value just goes here at the end. So this function in standard form looks like this in vertex form. Remember, the vertex goes in the center of the table. So negative 2, negative 1 goes right in the middle of the table here. And then remember, we fill in the x values by 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 going up, and then I'm going to add 1 going down. We then have this plus 1a plus 3a plus 5a rule. And the rule is when a is 1, you simply add 1, add 3, add 5. And we don't even need to get to the add 5 at this point. So if I have negative 1 here and I add 1 to get my next term, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And then from that, I go ahead and I add 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. And we also learned that when we're graphing and we're making our table, it's symmetric. So if I have 0 here, it's going to be 0 here. If I have 3 up top, it's going to be 3 at the bottom. Now, this plus 1a plus 3a plus 5a rule is just a quicker way, instead of substituting in a negative 4 in up here, to get the y value and plugging in a negative 3. Just like the way we plugged in a negative 2 to get the negative 1, I could technically do that with those numbers and make my table, but it's kind of easier to follow that rule. So now let's go ahead and graph it. We make our x and y axis with no problem. We start plotting our points. We should instantly start to see that when we plot our points, it makes a nice u-shaped graph. It's not a straight line. We're not making this jagged graph. And our parabola is this nice smooth curve. Notice my vertex of negative 2, negative 1 is right down here. I can then figure out my domain. Remember, domain for all of these parabolas, guys, it's always going to be all reals. Your range is about your y values. So notice this graph starts on the y-axis at a negative 1, and then it's everything above negative 1. So my range would be y is greater than or equal to negative 1. 
Something I didn't draw on this graph is the axis of symmetry, which look guys, we solved was x equals negative two. So I actually can draw the axis of symmetry. It would be this line right here at x equals negative two, which is what we solved for before, which is pretty good. Once I see my graph, I can also figure out my roots are zeros. It's where it crosses the x-axis. We see the graph crosses the x-axis at two points. It's this point and this point. It's where x is at negative three and x is at negative one. Everything comes together. Our axis of symmetry is our vertical line that cuts the graph in half. Our roots are x-intercepts, which also, by the way, notice are in our table here as our two x-intercepts, negative three and negative one. Now, factoring. Let's say we took this function, f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, and I said to you, solve it by factoring. So first step in solving a polynomial equation is to set the equation equal to 0. So we set the f of x equal to 0, which, remember, means you're really setting the y equal to 0, which is how you find the x-intercept, which is what we just did in the graph. Anyway, if I was to factor, I'd have to figure out what factors multiply to get negative, I'm sorry, multiply to get 3, but add up to get 4. Well, the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3, and if they're both positive, they will add up to get 4. So this gets factored as x plus 1, x plus 3. And then remember how to solve. We set each factor equal to 0, and then we get our solutions. Now, notice the two solutions here, negative 1 and negative 3, are exactly the same roots that we got when we graphed. They should be the same. They're from the same function. Now I can also put this in factored form. Up here is the factored form of this equation, x plus 1, x plus 3. So factored form, this box here that I could fill in, ends up looking like f of x equals x plus 1, x plus 3, completing the square. So if we took this function, we set it equal to 0 as an equation, and we get x squared plus bx to be by itself. So we move that 3 to the other side. We then have to purposely make a perfect square trinomial. So we take a look at the b value. The b is 4. We take half of 4, which is 2, and then we square it, which actually also happens to be 4. If that 4x was actually 6x, we would take half of 6 is 3, and then square it to get 9. And we would add 9 on both sides. But here, we're looking at 4. We take half of it, which is 2. We square it, which is also 4. And we add that on both sides to get our new equation. Now, x squared plus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square trinomial, and it can be factored as x plus 2 squared. Because remember, you take the square root of the first term, x, square root of the last term, 2, sine of the middle term. The way we undo squaring something is we take the square root on both sides. We have to account for the plus or minus the square root of 1, so be careful with that. The square root and the squared symbol on the left-hand side simplify each other out and we're left with x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus 1, because the square root of 1 is just 1. We want, now want to get x by itself, so let's go ahead and subtract 2, and our equation looks like this. x equals negative 2 plus or minus 1. Now remember, we use the plus sign to get the first solution, the minus sign to get the second solution. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Then we use the minus sign. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. We have our two solutions. The exact same solutions we got by factoring, which were the exact same solutions we got when we graphed. Last one, quadratic formula. So we need to make sure we know in our quadratic formula still our a, b, c, our a, b, and c values. So a is 1, b is 4, c is 3. If x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's take a look. So this becomes x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now b is 4, so it's 4 squared minus 4ac. So 4 times 1 times 3, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. Now that becomes negative 4 plus or minus the square root. 4 squared is 16. Negative 4 times 1 times 3 is that negative 12. 2 times 1 is just 2. This now becomes x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of just 4. 16 minus 12 is 4 over 2, which then becomes x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2 over 2. Now remember, we use the plus sign to get our first solution, minus sign to get our second. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Then negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 
Now let's use the minus sign. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. The moral of this story is obviously pretty clear at this point. Whether you graph and you find the roots or the zeros where it crosses the x-axis, you factor, you complete the square, or you use your quadratic formula, you're all going to get the same exact results. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please rewatch as much as you need to. Thank you. Bye.